My dudes, what's going on? Today, we're going to do something a little educational. I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks to help you progress through party dungeons and give you an idea of what to prioritize and help the run stay consistent. And I know the last couple of videos, I've been using footage from my Twitch stream. Speaking of which, go follow me. I wanted to keep this video just for the YouTube fam. So no clips from Twitch. This is going to be just recorded footage. So with that said, let's get into it. So first off, what class should you be using? Unfortunately, there isn't a concrete answer, but as reviewed in my other video, the community is pretty decided on Maestro for his attack speed when you enter the dungeon with a Celtic ordeal, as well as coin toss being comparable to sh Shaman's potions, Shaman for their ability to spam AoE skills, crazy concoctions and auspicious aura. Be warned, you need at least 60 mana in order to cost auspicious aura and sizzling skull, so it's unwise to use Shaman without a lot of base mana. This is more for late game party dungeons. Wizard, for the many of the same reasons as Shaman's notable skills, Tornado and Ice Shards, as it can be used to hit multiple people and slow them. But it also faces that the lack of mana at the start, so it's better to use it later on in the more mana you start with. Squire, for, well, Squire's a double whammy. It can hit multiple people with regular attacks and boasts impressive abilities like Shockwave Slash and Whirl, as well as Dagger Rank which can be useful in hitting targets in on uncommon scenarios, highly recommended for newer Dungeoneers. And Barbarian, for its abilities to hit multiple peoples with regular attacks and more versatile abilities than Squire, such as Bear Claw and Axe Hurl, both capable of hitting enemies above you. I would not suggest to use Bowman or Hunter, for they do not perform as well as the other classes, and they're mostly just single target damage. A solid beginner strat is using the Grey Grumblow build. It gives a rate of 40 to 60% depending on what your level is. However, it comes with the downside of only letting you use gray RNG items with it. So if you have a full run with full RNG gray items, and then you pick up a purple item, it will completely make gray grumbo useless. It will absolutely nullify the effects. Not much else to say. It's easy and pretty reliable, which can be relatively easily acquired by completing the naked but unafraid achievement in World 1, which is killing a poop without having anything equipped. Another great strat is start off with using Stardew Drop. It gives you 50 to 70% extra damage, but the downside is you need to have full mana for it to apply. It's really good with classes that use melee a lot. Maestro, 100% best item. As an upside, you can use it over Grey Grumblow as you get Horn in the Full, which is considered one of the best RNG items in the game. A late game strategy is to do the RNG voucher. So you start off the beginning, getting the Grey Grumblow built, and then once you feel like you get up to enough level and you unlock RNG voucher, then you're gonna be converting over to that. And what it does is it's a chance to get an RNG item from selling enhancers, and you can spam RNG items, so the chance you'll get is like Stardew Drop or Single Cut, Horn in the Full, etc., etc., etc. A downside of this build is the requirements of getting this RNG item, which requires rank 10 from your red salt refinery, which takes a long time. It's time to stop. When it comes to dungeon cards, are an essential asset is the same as the rest of Eidolon, and what you want to pick really depends on what you're looking for. If you want more dungeon credits, you can go for the Chromium Frog card, the Forlorn Grand Frogger card, or the Golden Galaxis card. But let's be real, the chance of you getting the Golden Galaxis card is slim to none. And you can also do quests to give you dungeon card packs, which will help you later on. And if you're going for Dungeon Flurbos, which is the currency to upgrade in the base game, you can get the Rotting Grand Frogger and the inevitable Snako Step. If you find yourself struggling to get cards you want, it might be best off to start in getting these cards to buff your card drop chance, which is Lava Slimer card, the Grumblow card, and Galaxis card. A few tips for cards before we move on is using the Grand Frogger card, which gives you a 15 to 60% chance to start the game with an extra RNG item. It can be switched out for a different card once in game. And World 3's Dungeon Guide, Worldo has a quest to give you more dungeon card packs. So you wanna make sure that you do all the quests for all the party dungeons to get as much dungeon card packs as possible. The most important base stats that you're gonna wanna have if you want to go Wizard, you want to go Shaman, you're going to be prioritizing MP, base damage, damage percent, crit chance, and drop rarity. Drop rarity is only super useful for World 1 because you must require for items to be dropped in order to use it. But if you're using something as a Barbarian or a Maestro, 
MP is not much of an issue, so you can change it out for going just base damage and damage percent, and then doing drop rarity, crit chance, and then MP. But you at least want about 40 to 60 MP while you're doing your runs. MP boosts not only your total MP, but your MP regen rate, which can be useful when using Stardew Drop. Crit chance is pretty essential. Not only do you do more crits, it just means more damage, but if you get the Horn of the Full, some extra crit chance goes a long ways, because it only gives you 15% flat crit, so you're going to need a bunch more crit in order to make Horn of the Full truly worth it. Drop rarity increases your odds of getting better weapons, armor, and jewelry, as well as the amounts of drops that you get that helps a ton for completing the World 1 dungeons, but it's not a necessity in World 2 or World 3. Base damage and damage percent, extra damage is extra damage. You should upgrade these both evenly for the best results. This does not mean the other passive stats are useless. You should try to keep around half of the really important ones. Block chance and movement speed is useful when in World 2 or World 3. HP should be upgraded if you're playing with others a higher rank than you because they'll often not put you at risk. When it comes to Flurbos, there's going to be bonuses included as 5-star talents, Super Source, which is base efficiency for skills, which is actually really good, Dungeonic Damage, which just boosts up your damage for how much dungeon credits you've collected, Milky Way Candies, which is has a chance of giving you a time candy after 30 plus hours, but I don't suggest it, Action Frenzy, which gives you 30% more skilling speed at max, which is massive for AFK gains, Mega Crit gives you crit chance and gives you extra crit damage once you've surpassed 100% crit chance, but reality, you're not going to really get there. You can also get jewelry from it, but it's not really all that worth it since you're going to be spending all your flurbos on other things such as weapon power and AFK gains, defense percent, and accuracy percent. Now that we've gone through that massive info dump, let's actually get into examples so I can show you guys what I mean by this and explain it a little bit better. So we're going to be going over the credits, traits, and passive stats, and then we'll move on to flurbos. So with the traits, what I prefer to use is I like to use the just three base damage because it's just extra damage that scales off with damage percent. I like to start each dungeon run with two gray RNG items because it also will stack later on, you'll see. And with the final one, with the rank 15, I like to take each RNG gray item gives plus 1% drop chance. So it stacks with the second kind of cool trait at rank 10. I like to take dungeon credit drops 30% more often from mobs and bosses because you want to be upgrading more credits because remember, Flurbos only work in the base game. Flurbos don't count towards anything that has to do with party dungeons. And since I run RNG Voucher, I like to take the Enhancer drops from mobs instead of equipment by 25% more often. I like to take the shop prices of RNG items, scale up 15% slower for my rank 30 trait. And for my rank 35 trait, I like to take the higher rarity RNG items, aka green or better, are 25% more likely. So I have a better chance of getting RNG Voucher or Crit of the Full, etc, etc. Now, since I'm a main with Maestro, I prefer to take things as I don't need MP as much. So I take base damage at 75 with total damage percent at 71. So I kind of keep them at a 50-50 split. A nice 20% crit chance. I will eventually get this higher because I like to run Horn of the Full whenever I can get it. So it just makes it really much easier. Movement speed and block chance to me are more of a commodity. It's not really a necessity, so you don't really need to prioritize it. And drop rarity, I have at least 61 in drop rarity, so my world one runs are way more consistent to getting to third frog. Now, once you start getting your stuff to about 40 to level 50 in your passive stats, I would suggest to upgrade all of your RNG items up to max, except for recycler. You don't have to worry about that, but every gray item, you realistically want to have them maxed as soon as possible by prioritizing Stardew Drop and Grey Grumblow because those are going to be your strongest tools, especially when you're just starting out. If you don't have RNG Voucher, prioritizing Grey Grumblow first will must be a priority. And if you're looking for consistent god runs, you definitely want to prioritize Sugar Rush to max out, Sharp Eye to max out, if you're doing World 1, Rabbit Paw to max out, Rusty Blade is always a good one to max, Mana Crystal is also a decent one to max, and then Handy Ice Pick is also a necessity because that makes it so you only need three of them to actually have a 100% double hit. Double hit means double damage. And Boss Skull, just for that extra damage. Now, when it comes to leveling up your weapon, it depends on what class you play. If you have a lot of excess credits, level up your weapon. If you're using only Maestro, you don't need to worry about this. So you don't need to level up your weapon whatsoever because you use the Celtic Ordeal. Or Banana Hands, because I know I pronounce it wrong. If you can get it to at least tier three, 
then you're in a good standing and then you can start leveling up other things because it's just going to get to a point where it's going to get super super expensive and if you're running rng voucher build you want to upgrade the drop rate of your enhancers this will make it so you have a better chance of getting more items for your RNG voucher. Now with Flurbos, you kind of have what you want to take when you want to take it. It's kind of your choice. But instead of going for books first, I would strongly prioritize going for the non-dungeon stats, such as prioritizing weapon power and talent points first. Because weapon power is just an extra 20 weapon power, well 19.2 to be exact, but it gives you that much more for your characters for dungeon to reach damage threshold, and the talent points for the plus 50 because it gives you plus 50 in each tab. So that's tab one, tab two, tab three, and star talent points. So if you get this maxed, you actually get a total of 200 talent points. 5% AFK gains because you can never have enough AFK gains. Defense percent, so you use less food on rams, blood bones, etc. Just progressing in general. And accuracy percent, since world four is coming out soon, you're gonna want as much accuracy as possible or you're just struggling to have accuracy, so you can take less talent points in tab one and instead of your secondary stat and put it more into your main stat. And then class XP, skilling XP, and monster cash is more of just a commodity that makes you just upgrade faster. Well, that's a lot of info in one video, but I wanted to give you guys a better understanding of what to do. Tell me what you think in the comment section below. Check out my socials, I'll leave everything in a pinned comment below as well. And if you enjoyed the video, Thank you for watching, and if you want to support me, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more future Eidolon content, and if you guys really want, I can make a video for each party dungeon and the most reliable way to complete them currently. I'm doing progression in World 3 party dungeon, trying to kill 3rd Galaxis as the recording of this video. Anyways, tune in next week when we do our next Eidolon video. Stay safe, happy hunting, and peace out.